Hello and welcome to Thor Labs. My name is Renee and today I'm going to be working with KF flanges. KF is an acronym for a phrase in German that means small flange. These flanges are also called QR flanges for quick release. Today I'll be working with several different types of flange components including an elbow, pipes, and a blank. I'll use o-rings and hinge clamps like these in order to make connections between two flange components such as between this pipe and this blank. I'll use gloves and aluminum foil to keep my parts clean. And a little later, I'll comment on the use of vacuum grease and demonstrate how to apply it to an O-ring. And now I'd like to say a few words about personal protective equipment. Except in this case, it's less about protecting the person and more about protecting the vacuum system. The goal is to keep from contaminating surfaces that will be exposed to vacuum or surfaces that will be used to create the vacuum seal. Humans are massive sources of contamination. We scatter hairs, dust, and dirt. We smudge surfaces with fingerprints, oils, and anything else that we happen to touch. If that material gets smeared or deposited inside a vacuum system or on a ceiling surface, there's a good chance that you won't be able to pump your system down to the desired vacuum level. In addition, introducing even a small amount of foreign material into your vacuum chamber can contaminate whatever process you're running in the chamber. And because of that, you'll typically see people wear a hairnet, lab coat, booties, and gloves when working with vacuum components or open vacuum systems. The gloves should be powder free. The powder in gloves is a significant contaminant because that powder will be scattered everywhere when the gloves are put on, when they're taken off, and when they rip. These metal components have hard, sharp, pinchy edges, and because of that, there is the real danger of ripping a glove and getting a fingerprint or blood on something when you're working with these components. That's one reason I always double glove. Another reason I double glove is that it's not unusual for me to have to touch something that's going, that will contaminate my gloves. And then I will have to change my gloves before I touch something sensitive. When I wear gloves, my hands perspire. And I find it very difficult to pull a glove on a hand that's not completely dry. So I find it much easier to pull a glove on when my, or when over another glove. I'll use a rubber band at my wrist to hold this first layer of gloves on. They'll keep these gloves in place when I take off my second layer. When I put my second layer of gloves on, I like to fold up the cuff because that will make it easier to take them off in the future. So if these gloves were contaminated, the way I would take them off is to use the pinky of one hand, hook it under the glove, under the cuff of the opposite hand, and then pull it off inside out. While I'm pulling it off, I use the opposite hand to gather up the contaminated glove into my fist and then use this pinky under that cuff to pull the glove off. And now all the contamination is contained within this package which can then be disposed of. And of course then it's time to put on another pair of gloves. I've already prepared my work surface and what that mostly means for me is spreading a piece of aluminum foil out. The aluminum foil is a fast way to create a work surface that's safe for vacuum components. Another benefit of using the foil is that it can catch and contain any process material that might flake from the inside of components removed from your vacuum chamber. Now that I have my second layer of gloves on, I'm going to begin working with one of the AKF flange vacuum assemblies. This is a pipe. This is one flange. The other flange is hidden underneath this clamp. This is a blank. It's being used as an end cap to seal off this end of the pipe. I'm going to release the clamp by unscrewing this wing nut. When I've unscrewed it enough, I can rotate this part out, and now I can pry these two parts of the clamp open. And now you can see the O-ring that's compressed between these two flanges. 
I'll take the blank off. The O-ring is an elastomer gasket, and it's the O-ring that makes the vacuum seal between the two flanges. The circle of contact between the O-ring and the flange is a boundary between atmosphere and vacuum. Everything on the inside of the circle will be in vacuum. In this case, the O-ring is mounted on a centering ring that is also sometimes called a carrier. The centering ring and the O-ring are separable. The design of KF vacuum flanges always includes a smooth, flat surface that extends to the outer edge of the flange. This is the sealing surface, and this is the surface that contacts the O-ring. The design of KF flanges is genderless, so as long as two flanges are the same size, they can be coupled together. Flange sizes are standardized. The size is determined by the inner diameter of the largest pipe that can be welded to the flange. So in this case, the size of the flange is 25 millimeters and will be described as KF25, DN25, or NW25. DN stands for diameter nominal, and NW stands for the same thing in German. O-rings that are in good condition can provide a good vacuum seal because they are malleable and conform to gentle variations in surfaces they are pressed against. The centering ring or carrier is not technically necessary, but it's a nice accessory for a few reasons. It can help shield the O-ring from whatever process is being performed in the chamber, as well as keep the O-ring from skating off the sealing surface while you're making the connection. And the centering ring limits the compression applied to the O-ring. The O-ring does need to be compressed between the two flanges to get a good vacuum seal. Thorlabs designs KF flanges so that when the centering ring is used, compression is limited to between 30 and 50 percent. Compression of around 30 percent should be sufficient to provide a vacuum seal compatible with vacuum levels between 10 to the negative 7 and 10 to the negative 9 torr. Too much compression, for example over 60 percent, can damage the O-ring. The O-ring's leak rate depends on many factors, including the pressure differential between the atmosphere side and the vacuum side of the O-ring, the properties of the elastomeric material, and the operating temperature. Gas permeability through the O-ring and outgassing of the O-ring increases at higher temperatures. Higher temperatures also tend to release the O-ring's sealing force. Exposing an O-ring to higher temperatures while it is compressed will also worsen the O-ring's compression set. Compression set refers to permanent changes in the O-ring's shape that develop with time and use. When I notice compression set, I replace the O-ring, since KF couplings made with a stiff O-ring will often leak. Now that I'm finished working with this pipe, I want to put it into storage. Now what I want to do when I put it into storage is to protect both sealing surfaces. I don't want them to be scratched or dented, and I'd like to try to keep them clean. If you have the protective caps that these parts shipped with, then go ahead and apply the protective caps. They'll do a good job. When I don't have the protective caps, I'll use a piece of aluminum foil. I'll roll the part up in the aluminum foil. And I'll use the excess at both ends and crumple that excess around the ceiling surfaces. This excess is going to provide cushioning that's going to help protect those ceiling surfaces. And now that I've got this packaged, I'm able to put this on a shelf or in a box that's been labeled to tell me what this is so that I remember in the future. And now that I have that put away, I want to gather parts so that I can create my next assembly. Now before I assemble anything, I would like to make sure all the ceiling surfaces are in good condition. So I'm going to check the O-rings, going to stretch them a little bit, look at them all the way around, make sure I see no cracks. Make sure I see no divots. 
the surfaces should be smooth and unbroken. And I also want to make sure that they feel nice and malleable. These two O-rings appear to be in good condition. Now I'm going to move on to examining the flanges. I don't want to see scratches. I don't want to see dents. Particularly worrisome are scratches and dents that extend from the vacuum side of the flange to the atmosphere side, since those are more likely to cause leaks. They appear to be in good condition, as does this. Okay, now that I've done the first examination, in order to really prepare these parts to be coupled together, they need to be cleaned of any kind of superficial dirt, dust, or fuzz that might have collected on them. When I use a wipe, I like to fold it over a couple of times in order to make it more manageable. I'll then wet it with some isopropanol, and I'll first clean the centering rings. The centering rings won't be used to make the vacuum seal, but they will be in vacuum, and I'd like them to be clean. Drag the wipe all the way around the surface, and then I'll throw the wipe away. I don't want to reuse a wipe, because if I do, I risk depositing material that is picked up on the next thing that I clean. Clean the other centering ring. The next things I'll clean are the O-rings. I'll use a similar technique. Pick the O-ring up, fold the wetted wipe over its surface, and then as I clean the O-ring, I'm going to try to keep from touching the surfaces that are going to be used to make the seal. While this is clean, I'm going to put this on one of the centering rings. Now I'll clean the second O-ring. Fold it over, keep from touching the sealing surfaces. Now move on to the flanges. On this pipe, I'm only going to be using or making a connection to this flange. So I won't clean the other flange right now. I'll clean it before I make a connection to it later. And last, I'll clean the blank. Now that everything is clean, I can start assembling these parts. I'm going to try to keep the ceiling surfaces clean by not touching them. So I'm going to touch the outer edges of the O-ring, which will not see vacuum. Before I attach the clamp, I'd like to point out the chamfered edges of these KF flanges. The chamfer is what makes it possible for the clamps to actually compress the O-ring. To show you what I mean, this is the inside of a clamp. It's sort of U-shaped, and that, um, that open area is what the assembly fits in. So you can see it fits in like this. And I can't slide the assembly in any farther into this clamp because the O-ring is too tall. The O-ring would have to be compressed in order for me to slide it farther in. And what I want to do is swing this part into the groove. But I can't do it. I need to loosen the swing nut a little bit more. The assembly that it was removed from had a compressed O-ring. This O-ring is just too tall. And I like to unscrew the wing nut upside down so this little washer falls flush against the wing nut. Okay, now I can fit it in. Tighten it up a little bit. You can see what tightening the wing nut does to this inner diameter here, defined by the, the inner edges of this clamp. You can see that inner diameter shrink as the wing nut is tightened.
basically the clamp is riding up the chamfered edge and it is causing the o-ring to compress so it can continue and as i tighten the wing nut i'm not going to use a tool i'm not going to use an extraordinary force i'm just going to tighten just finger tight that feels good to me vacuum grease is not necessary under these conditions because these flange surfaces are very smooth. So when you have um, flanges with this surface roughness and better, I would not consider using vacuum grease. If the flange surfaces are rougher, then vacuum grease could very well help you reduce your leak rate. If you've decided to use vacuum grease, definitely consider the type of vacuum grease and whether or not it's compatible with the process that you're running in your chamber. While vacuum greases are formulated to have very low vapor pressure, that vapor pressure is not zero. And the vapor pressure will increase as the temperature increases. With time, with temperature, with vapor deposition, and with just creep of the grease itself, the grease that was on your O-ring will migrate to other surfaces in your chamber. So be aware of that. And before deciding whether or not to use vacuum grease, Consider what's involved with cleaning the vacuum grease off of the flanges. Some vacuum greases, such as silicone greases, are extremely difficult to clean, so keep that in mind. Always wear gloves. Apply the vacuum grease using a finger. And then apply it to the O-ring. I'll dot it around the edges just to get things started, but the end result should not have any glops. At the end, your O-ring should look wet. That's a bit of excess. Go ahead and use a wipe to get rid of excess. Just smear it around. You want a nice uniform coating. That looks good to me. The O-ring looks shiny. Looks uniform. I don't see any spots I've missed. I'll put it on the carrier. and put it on the flange. Now I don't want to touch anything else because I've got grease on my hands and I don't want to put grease all over my vacuum system. So I'm going to take my gloves off, top layer, exchange them for nice new gloves. And now I'll put the blank on and tighten the clamp as I did before. Swing the wing nut over, loosen. Slide it into the groove, and then begin to tighten. It feels like it's nice and tight to me. And this is our assembled vacuum assembly. There are a lot of benefits to using KF flanges. They're relatively inexpensive and they're fast to decouple and then recouple. They are convenient to use on ports in your vacuum system that you access constantly and they are frequently used to attach equipment like 
vacuum pumps, and shared equipment like leak detectors to your vacuum system. Thank you for watching. I hope this helps you in your lab someday. And if you have any questions, please contact Tech Support.